Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Di da da, di da 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 da, da da dit, di 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 da. Here to talk about feed options for a coaxial cable fed sloping dipole. A sloping dipole differs considerably from a level dipole in one respect. One side is lower than the other side. And that means that the antenna is not balanced at this feed point right here. It doesn't matter then really whether you feed it with coaxial cable or balanced line. In fact, if you feed it with balanced line, you're going to get an unbalance in the line and radiation from the line. So you're probably better off feeding it with coaxial cable. Now this is a 40 meter dipole antenna because you can probably tell each side is 33 feet long. Now my uh, viewer had a question. Is it better to feed the center conductor to the top part of the dipole or to the bottom part of the dipole? And my answer to that question in my email reply was, it doesn't matter. And I don't really think it does. But maybe you do think it does. It does seem to make a little more sense to feed the lower half with the shield portion of the coax and the upper half with the sender conductor. But is there any technical reason for that? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think it really matters. One thing that you do not need is a transmatch at the feed point. And my viewer said he had a transmatch at the feed point. Now maybe I'm getting him wrong, but you shouldn't need one in fact, uh, it isn't going to do any good at all. It may make the bandwidth a little bit wider by uh, compensating for slightly higher SWRs than your radio can tolerate. But I don't think uh, that it uh, really makes any difference. It is a 40 meter dipole, and that is that. It just so happens that it will also work on 15 meters, the third harmonic, uh, because then you'll have a one and a half wavelength antenna here instead of a half wavelength antenna. So you can uh, slope a dipole, say, from a high tree, maybe 40 feet up in the air, to the edge of your roof, maybe 10, 12 feet in the air, and you will get a perfectly good antenna you'll get a little bit of directionality with this antenna in the direction that would otherwise be right along the wire. You'll get a little bit of radiation in this direction and this direction. The main radiation in this particular view would be towards us and away from us. But that uh, is uh, how you I would feed a sloping dipole. I don't think that this matters, but maybe you think it does. So I'm going to leave comments open and you tell me, do you think that it matters? And if you think so, please say, please give a good reason why. And if you think not, please give a good reason why not. I have a good uh, reason why not is, uh, I don't have the foggiest idea. I don't just I just don't think it should really matter. Uh, but maybe I'm wrong. So uh, these of course are insulators right here. Uh, and that uh, it can be whatever you want it to be. This should be stranded insulated copper wire number 12 or number 10 gauge AWG wire. So there you have it. Uh, leave a little slack in this antenna in case there's a windstorm. You don't want it to snap. Or you can use one of the antenna tightening schemes that I outlined in a different video. But that is my take on feeding 
a sloping dipole with coaxial cable, in this case a 40 and 15 meter dipole. Uh, Stangibalisco W1GV signing off for now saying 73 which means best regards in ham radio jargon and so long which means da 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 da